So as you guys know, Mid Journey release is new version V6.1 and we tested that out in our last video and it had pretty decent updates, right? So today in this video, we're gonna go ahead and test out ultra realism in the new V6.1 version of Mid Journey by discussing some of the important parameters, some of the important settings through which you can get amazingly looking ultra realistic images with beautiful colors, amazing quality and ultra details. So yeah, this is Usman from Screen Curve and without further ado, let's jump right into this advanced tutorial of ultra realism in mid journey all right guys so here i am in the home page of mid journey and right off the bat you guys can see i've been working on uh, the ultra realism images in mid journey for quite a while and i basically finalized some of the best parameters some of the best settings you can do in the latest mid journey v6.1 to get amazing results and ultra realistic images right so first of all if you go ahead and talk about the important parameters in mid journey so if I go ahead and go to the settings in the prompt box, so first of all, it basically provides you the image size. So we're going to go ahead and not focus on that that much. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and do it square for now. And then we have the aesthetics, right? So this is now the new parameter list in mid journey, where it basically provides only three parameters, which is stylization, weirdness, and variety, right? So these are basically the most important parameters that you can use in mid journey. But let's just say if you want to go ahead and use more, you want to use the quality parameter, the seed parameter, the stop, the style, uh, the tile, the version, or anything like that, you can go ahead and easily do that, like, you know, dash dash and any parameter. Let's just say if I want to go ahead and use the chaos, so I can do dash dash chaos at the end of any prompt, right? So this is really easy. But according to me, these are the most important parameter like stylized, uh, weirdness, which was basically used to be chaos before and the variety, all right? So for the stylization, the most common and the accurate one through which you can go ahead and get amazing results if you go ahead and do it 100, right? You can increase that all the way to the thousand if you want more and more aesthetics of mid journey in that, but specifically if we talk about ultra realism, so for that 100 stylization is the perfect, right? So then if you talk about the weirdness, so weirdness is basically the ability to show a unique and unexpected outcomes. But for this video, we're going to be very specific and very accurate with our prompts. So I'm not going to go ahead and use the weird one and the variety. Obviously, we're not going to do that, right? But we are going to use one of the most important parameters that was mostly highlighted in the new version B6.1. That would be quality, right? So we're going to go ahead and see how you can use that accurately in your prompts, right? Then we have the models, so obviously you can go ahead and use the standard and the raw one. I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can differentiate between standard and raw one. Then we have the virgin, so obviously we're going to go ahead and use the 6.1, uh, the latest one in all of our prompts and images. Then you need to keep your personalized option turned off, all right? All right, so now let's just go ahead and talk about another very important thing uh, in creating ultra realistic images in mid journey is the prompt formula, right? So let's just take an example. I basically went ahead and typed in my simple prompt without any prompt formula, as you guys can see. So I simply wrote portrait of an elderly fisherman. So it basically provided me kind of a result. You guys can see it is like a painting image, right? It's not ultra realistic. That's not exactly what I want because obviously I wasn't specific in my prompt, right? And take a look at the second example. It's not looking as much ultra realistic. Similarly, the third one and the fourth one, right? So now exactly when our prom formula comes into action. So talking about the prom formula, first of all, you need to go ahead and provide your photography type, then your subject or action, then your shot type, your location, your fashion, year of film stock, camera, then director or photographer, emotion, lighting and color, right? So these are basically all of the important things through which you can create professional looking ultra realistic image, right? So this is basically a professional prompt formula right here for you guys, right? You can copy and create images with that very, very effectively and very easily, okay? All right, so soon after following this prompt formula, I basically went ahead and typed in my mid journey that portrait photograph of a young woman in deep thought, holding a vintage camera, close-up shot in a cozy retro themed cafe. And with that, I basically generated these results, like take a look at this, right? We basically went from these images to these results, right? These are looking absolutely beautiful, very, very ultra realistic, very sharp detail, no graininess, like no painting effect in that uh, they were avoiding in our previous results, right? So yeah, just by following the prompt formula, you can take a look like how much of a big difference we got in our images, right? The images turn out very, very ultra realistic now, right? All right, so now we're going to go ahead and deep dive into ultra realism a bit more. So I basically categorize ultra realism and mid journey into three categories, right? So we're going to go ahead and discuss human portraits, 
realistic scene or images and landscape images, right? So from that, we'll be able to get an idea like how beautifully the Mid Journey has updated its new version and how now we're getting uh, the ultra realistic images with the help of Mid Journey, right? So first of all, we're gonna go ahead and discuss some human portraits with Mid Journey. So first of all, for that, I typed in my first from portrait photograph of an elderly man sitting quietly on a park bench, close-up shot in a peaceful city park dressed in a cozy bull sweater in 2024, shot on Kodak Tri X400 with a Leica Q2, and you know all those important details. So this basically prompt is very professional, very advanced, and it follows my prompt formula, right? And with the help of that, I basically got these results. Like, take a look at this, right? These are looking absolutely beautiful. Like, take a look at the detail into that, the wrinkles, uh, the sweater, everything turns out really good and the bouquet effect is absolutely crazy, right? Like take a look at this example, then the last one, right? Every image is absolutely beautiful, you guys, right? Then similarly, I basically created uh, this image, uh, which was basically street photography of a young woman standing under a street lamp side view in a quiet suburban neighborhood, right? And this provided me basically these results. These results are great. I'm absolutely liking those and uh, no complaints whatsoever. But from here, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a magic. So you can go ahead and convert all these images by using the quality parameter. So by default, the quality parameter is set to one. And if you want to go ahead and work on your ultra realism, so you can change these results to quality too, right? And it will basically provide you these kind of results with a lot more detail into that. Like take a look at the light on it here. And everything looks so much in detail, right? So yeah, this is how you can use the quality parameter very, very beautifully and create amazing results like these, all right? All right, next, so we're going to go ahead and take the same example that we did before, but with the quality two parameter this time. So this is the same uh, portrait photography for a young woman in a deep pot holding a vintage camera. And take a look at these details, right? So yeah, by using the quality two parameter, the images are really, really beautiful now. With so much detail in the face, so much bokeh effect, very, very rich detail, right? And yeah, the images now are looking absolutely beautiful. Like, take a look at all these images, guys, right? These are looking really, really good. All right, so another thing you can do is you can now create variations of your camera angles with ultra-realistic images. So yeah, first of all, let's just say this is our basic image. So this was a portrait photography of a child playing with a toy car captured in a sunny backyard. So these are the results that provided me that. So yeah, these are looking really beautiful, very, very rich detail, very accurate, good bouquet effect, right? And from that, you can go ahead and create variations now. Now this one, we have the top down view of the same prom, of the same boy. Like take a look at these details. These are looking really, really good, right? So these are top down view of that. Then we have the side view, right? So now we have a portrait photography of a child playing with a toy car, but now with the side view of that, right? And yeah, all of these images are looking really, really good. Then the next, we have the close-up view. So now we have close-up view portrait photography, but the shot is focusing on the child's hand. And yet these images are looking really, really good, you guys. Like, take a look at this. Then the last one, we have the wide angle, right? So now we have the same portrait photography of a child playing, but with the wide angle shot this time, right? So this is how you can go ahead and create amazing variations uh, with the journey in your ultra-realistic images by just providing the shot type of whatever you want, right? So it can be like over the shoulder view, like it can be ultra wide, extra wide, or whatever you want, okay? All right, so next you can go ahead and create ultra realistic fashion photography as well. So this is a fashion photography of a man standing against a brick wall, wide angle shot in an urban alleyway, wearing a tailor suit in 2024. And take a look at all of these images, right? These are looking really good, black and white images, classic, uh, with basically Canon EOS camera. And yeah, all of these images look really, really good. And these are really in detail and really accurate, right? Similarly, you can go ahead and create studio photographs as well. So this is basically studio photography of a woman standing with her hands in her pockets, full body shot in a minimalistic bite studio, wearing casual jeans and a t-shirt in 2024, right? So yeah, all of these creations look really, really good. There's no deformation whatsoever. Uh, no lack of detail and everything looks top-notch in that, right, you guys? All right, next we have the portrait photography of a middle-aged man standing by a window, close-up shot in a cozy living room wearing a flannel shirt in 2024. So take a look at all of these generations, right? These are looking really good. Like, take a look at the lighting on his face, uh, the beard, everything is looking really good. Uh, let's take a look at this one. And yeah, these all images are absolutely perfect, right? 
Then we have a very amazing shot, the street photography of a young couple standing side by side, and this is a wide angle shot, right? And take a look at the first image, then you have the second one, then the third one, then the fourth, right? Very rich in detail, very accurate, no deformation whatsoever, and yet these all are looking absolutely beautiful, you guys, right? All right, then again, we have the studio photography of a man standing with his arms crossed, full body shot in a brightly lit modern studio wearing a simple black t-shirt and jeans and yeah take a look at these generations these are looking really good so now we have a studio photography like kind of a half body uh, shot and yeah these all images are really really good you guys right okay so now we have very amazing portrait photography of an elderly woman standing in front of a rustic wooden door and take a look at the detail into that like you know take a look at the clarity of the face uh, the detail in the boats, everything is looking so good, like so aesthetic, right? And yeah, everything looks up to the mark, really, really amazing. Then we have a very close-up portrait photography of a young man with striking blue eyes. And take a look at the detail in the images, look really, really good, absolutely perfect. No graininess whatsoever, right? Similarly, if you talk about the close-up portrait photographies, you can go ahead and enhance that by using the style raw parameter. So if you want to go ahead and access that, you can go to your settings and simply click on this raw and this will enable your style a raw option right and take a look at the images right so it basically turned the images from this to this so now we have pretty much more focus on the face with more detail on the face and yeah take a look at this right so it basically provides kind of a boost to your images kind of a bit a more contrast into that and yeah the images are not bad they're looking good uh, so basically the style row works very good for a uh, very close-up portrait right similarly take a look at this one so this was our normal close-up portrait all right, so by using the style raw parameter, basically change that to this, right? From this to this, now we have more focus on the face, more detail, more contrasty images, and yeah, all of them are looking great, but yeah, if you want to go ahead and use a style raw parameter, uh, it should be only for close-up portrait according to me, okay? All right, so now let's just go ahead and discuss some realistic images with mid-journey. So first of all, I basically type realistic photography of a bustling city street during rush hour with pedestrian crossing the road and yeah we basically found a bit of a deformation in the people not so very accurate and yeah this image is looking great but under that all the images are pretty decent not too bad right because obviously this was a very complex image uh, with very tough subjects next we have an amazing realistic photography of a peaceful lakeside cabin at sunrise with mist rising from the water and a rowboat tied to a small dock and take a look at the results all of them are looking absolutely perfect. We don't have any deformation in all these images, right? Okay, so next we have realistic photography of a farmer working in a sunflower field at sunset with golden light, casting log shadows across the landscape, right? So yeah, these all images are created with aspect ratio four by three, which is basically landscape. And yeah, all images are looking really, really good. Okay, now let's talk about some of the landscapes. So first of all, I have realistic landscape photography of a serene mountain range at dawn with mist rolling through the valleys and the first light of the sun touching the peaks, snow cape peaks. And yeah, the images look really good. Then the next one we have landscape photography of a vast desert under a clear blue sky with towering sand dunes stretching into the distance and the sun casting long shadows, right? So yeah, it's look really, really good for that. Then the next one, like take a look at this one. So now we have a landscape photography of a tranquil lake surrounded by autumn foliage uh, with the trees reflecting perfectly on the still water. And yeah, all of these images are looking really, really perfect. Absolutely beautiful, very aesthetic, right you guys? So there you have it guys. This was the exploration of ultra realism in the new V6.1 version of Mid Journey. So yeah, I hope you guys like this amazing tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. One. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.